Today I'm going to show you how I made this base piece from start to finish. Vasco Toys. Action figure, dioramas, and props. I start off by using some 1 inch Owens Corning pink insulation foam, a sharp knife, and a drywall T-square. This base is going to be 14 inches wide by 14 inches long. Next I turn to my trusty Proxon hot wire foam cutting table, which I use to cut individually cut 2 inch by 2 inch floor tiles that we're going to glue down to the base that we carved in the first step of this project. Here's how they look after that step. Back to the Proxon to make sure that I can cut these thin the way tiles would be. I've got all the tiles cut, but I want to test fit to make sure that my measurements are right and that they all fit the way that they need to. This commission piece is going to feature two small steps leading up to the platform, so I want to go ahead and get the outline for those stairs cut here with the Proxon. This base is supposed to have some destruction on it, so I need to make sure I get some texture, and I'm doing that with a rolled up ball of tin foil. Doing this before I glue the pieces together is going to make my life a lot easier. To help with stability, I'm going to glue these down on some chipboard, but first I need to measure to make sure that I cut it the right width. I use a T-square and an X-Acto knife to make sure that I get a nice straight cut that's square to the edge. Now all I have to do is glue down the pieces onto the chipboard and then glue them to each other as well. Now that that's done, it's back to the floor tiles. Time to use a coffee container and some tin foil and rocks, which are going to be my texturing secret weapons. After I've cleaned out my coffee container, I throw all of the XPS foam tiles, or at least a lot of them, into the container. Then drop in the tin foil and the rocks and close it up. Once the lid is secure, it's time to shake this up as much as I can. The more I shake it, the more texture I'm going to get on all of my XPS tiles. Let's check our work. Here's a tile that I did not texture compared to one that I did do with the coffee container method. And I think you guys can see there's quite a big difference here. The edges are not as straight and there's so much texture throughout. I think it adds some really good realism to this. This is not a method that I made up. This is something that I picked up from other foam hobbyists in the foam modeling group that I belong to on Facebook. So shout out to that group. Here's how they look test fitted on the piece with the stairs before gluing. Now it's time to glue everything down. I'm texturing this long horizontal piece that I'm going to place before putting down the two inch by two inch tiles. Once that's in place, it's time for some low temperature hot glue, which I use to glue the tiles into their spots. I mentioned earlier that this commission is going to be a destroyed tile base. Here are some of the reference images that I'm working off of for this project. Because of that, I'm not placing these 100% square, and I'm trying to be really strategic about how they should be in terms of fragmenting and in terms of the damage that should be displayed on the piece. In order to get this right, I really had to take my time and really had to think through the way that tiles would crack. My approach for getting what I thought would be the best possible look was doing some shallow cuts of where I thought the damage should be and then snapping them off with my fingers. I really had to be careful to remember the order in which I cut them off and how they all fit together so that it would look correct when I placed them down and glued them down on the base. This is something I try to do with a lot of intention. I really tried to think through if a fragment should be sticking upward or pushed down into the base. And I tried to apply that same thought process throughout my applications for this entire base. I think one of the keys to success with this piece was trying to almost forecast in my head what I wanted to do with the cracking for the steps that I hadn't glued down yet. Because the way I've chosen to do this, it's a lot harder to go back and change these once they're glued down. So I think it was really important to try to have a plan or try to formulate a plan as I went. This section was arguably the most difficult part of the damage on this diorama. My goal here was to have a little cratering that was created by some sort of impact in the tile. 
I wanted to have an area where the client could insert some characters who had been fighting and kicked up some of the tile. And this is really where you have to use your imagination. You have to envision the impact, what caused the impact, what the ripple effect would be with the cracking of the fragmented tiles and all of that to really sell this as a believable diorama effect. And I also want this to be multi-purpose. I want him to be able to use this in several different scenarios. So I keep that in mind as I'm trying to build in the damage to the base. If you get too specific on any one diorama, it really limits the playability and usability of the piece. After a lot of work, a lot of focus, and frankly a lot of time, I am on to the last row just gluing down the last few pieces of this diorama. Here's how it looks after we've glued everything down. The next step is going to be to go ahead and get this thing painted, and then we're going to weather it and do all kinds of great things with our paint. We're going to start out by priming this piece with Pewter Gray by Apple Barrel. Some people would probably base coat this in black, but I want this to really be a light gray, and I don't like base coating light things with black, so that's why I'm choosing to use this. You guys can actually watch a video that I have on that subject in the upper right hand corner. Starting with a dark gray instead of a black is still going to allow us to have the shadows and tones that people like to get from base coating in black, but it's going to make my life a lot easier when I go to paint this. Once this dries, we'll move on to the next coat. For my second coat, I'm going to use Granite Gray by Apple Barrel. For this coat, I am going to be using a technique that I use sparingly, which is dry brushing. If you're new to this technique, basically all you need to know is that you apply some paint to a brush, then you wipe most of it off on a paper towel, and then you apply it to the diorama. And what you're doing is really applying as little paint as possible to get a really good weathered kind of dirty effect, which you guys can see here. Using this technique is going to allow me to lighten the overall piece while allowing the color from the previous base coat to come through and the shadows to come through. It's going to look particularly cool around all the cracking and damage that we've done, which I'm really excited about. We're going to apply our third coat of paint, which is Heather Gray by Anita's, via dry brushing as well. This gray is a bit lighter, and it's going to allow me to get some color variation as we've now applied three different shades of gray to the piece. I still want this to be a little bit lighter, so I'm going to mix in Anita's White with the Anita's Heather Gray for our fourth coat. I don't want this to be pure white, but I'm definitely generous with the amount of white that I'm adding to the Heather Gray that's already on the palette. I give it a good mix, and then I'm ready to apply this to the diorama after I've wiped off almost all of it onto the paper towel. When you're dry brushing, a tip that I picked up from Euler's workshop is that you can use your finger to fix any smudging that might come up. Now it's time to create a wash, and I'm going to do that with some of the paint that I used on the other parts of this commission, the desert rock formations. This wash is just going to consist of the paint and quite a bit of water, which you guys see me continue to add here. Now what I'm going to do is really highlight all the cracks and edging with my wash, to make sure that they really stand out. I always really water down my washes on purpose just to make sure that I don't ruin my pieces. So what this means is that I have to go over these things several times. That's just my personal preference. If you don't want to do it that way, you don't have to. We are almost done. It's time for our final coat of paint, which I will be dry brushing. Again, I want to be light-handed here, and I want to make sure that what I focus on is sort of the edges where sand and dirt and dust would accumulate, because remember, this is going to be paired with the desert rock formations that I created for this commission. And with that, this diorama is done. I'm so excited with how this came out, and I hope you guys liked it. Thanks for checking out this video. If you liked the video, please go ahead and hit the thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Also, if you want to see how I made these rock formation pieces, this is an entire commission and I have videos on how I sculpted and painted these as well. I hope I'll see you in the next episode.